you have been here from day one. Um, very controversial tweet uh, you sent out, angry at Governor Nixon, saying, F you, Governor Nixon. Why? Well, let me tell you, I was here since day one. It was a Saturday late evening, and a good friend of mine, Antonio French, uh, said, hey, listen, we got to get out here. You have to be out here. And I came up, and I noticed um, a lot of people very angry about a young man laying dead on the ground for hours, literally for hours. And so since that point in time, I was protesting with the people. There's a lot of anger in this community. Uh, many people who have been intimidated, harassed by authority, such as police officers, and they felt as though, and they feel as though they are Michael Brown themselves. And so at any given time, wrong place, wrong time, they are Michael, Michael Brown. And so um, unfortunately, the Sunday after the, the killing of Michael Brown, uh, there was a lot of looting, unfortunately. And on Monday after the looting, um, we were protesting in peace and we were tear gassed. We were given no warning. In fact, I just did a different interview and, and it was said that there have always been at least 30 or 40 minutes prior to tear gassing, but not the first three days of tear gassing. We didn't know that. And so um, where I was, it was a one way street, one way in, one way out. I had my intern and a young reverend with me and we were trying to get out of the, the area at that time, there was a woman six months pregnant who was forced to the ground face down uh, because she was trying to get out of this street, which is a one-way street, and they thought of her as a threat. It felt as though we were being threatened be, and, or accused for being the looters, and we weren't. I was with about 150 kids, young people who live in the apartment buildings right on North Winds Estates, right behind the QT, and if I felt unsafe, I wouldn't have been there. We had no opportunity opportunity to leave. I was scared. I was nervous. I'm pretty courageous. Um, I'm a pretty courageous person. And I was nervous. I was nervous for my intern because she's only 21 years old. And the governor, Wednesday, he was still at the state's fair. He was at a country music concert when his own Democratic senator was getting tear gas, and he had not even been engaged in the situation whatsoever. So yes, I was very mad, and anyone, uh, people keep asking me if I regret what I said, and I don't, not whatsoever. One, it's my First Amendment right to say whatever the heck I want to say, um, any four-letter word, expletive, and I think anyone who has been tear gas, it would be abnormal if they did did not express themselves. So absolutely, I was upset. The, the most important thing your audience should know is that the governor still has not gone to ground zero. We are in day 11 or 12 now, and he's been to the municipalities, both north and south, and here at the command center, which is about a mile south, uh, southeast of the ground zero number one, because we have two ground zeros, and he has yet to come to talk to the people. I've been out on the ground since 6 o'clock this morning, and I was talking to one of my constituents this morning, and he said, I don't know what is going on with the governor, but we would have protected him. He didn't have to come in the, you know, at, in the evening time where there are a lot of come in the morning where there are fewer people, but the fact that he still has not come to talk to the people who see themselves as Michael Brown at any given time is really a slap in their face, and that's why I'm bringing into question um, you know, what his intent has been all along, and I have said publicly that he's always felt uncomfortable within the minority community. Uh, he only comes around the minority community when it's politically expedient. A great example, uh, last year he tried to cut TANF benefits, uh, which would disproportionately impact minority communities. He also wants to cut low-income housing tax credit benefits, which again would disproportionately impact minority communities. So this governor, for his entire career, political career, he's had a disconnect um, and not a true, genuine relationship with the, Af with the African American community, unless it's politically expedient for uh, the next promotion he may get.